What do you do when your back's against the wall, you can't find work, you have employees that need work, with ha- which have families to feed, and you're looking at your schedule and it's looking scarce? In this episode, I'm going to teach you some of the tactics that I use to make sure that we always have work. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat. And that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets podcast. What's up, guys? It's Tanner. Welcome back to the Trade Thrive podcast. Super excited to be here today to give you this information that I've been yearning to give, and it is about surviving in business. Now, we know this business is about survival. If it wasn't, then every business that had ever been started would still be in business. So there's a reason that they're no longer in business. And your job as a tradesperson is to make sure that you stay in business. Now, there is no guarantee that people will hire you. Now, that is something that's a little scary because it could happen where you go through a quote unquote drought. Have you been through one? I know that I've been very, very close. There have been times where I have had maybe one job coming up and nothing in sight. And you know that in your trade, there's a certain, um, I would say there's a certain uh, time frame that needs to occur before you can actually do the work. That is, you know, people who want to, you know, set that time for a specific date. There's people that want colors uh, picked if you're in painting or a specific flooring type picked if you're in flooring and, you know, they're waiting for maybe a different trade. So even if you get someone that says that they want to do business with you, what happens when it doesn't fit in that time frame that you need it? So the big, I would say the big game that you have to play, especially if you are someone that has employees, which you know that I have employees, is you have to make sure that schedule is full. That is the trade-off. A lot of people say, well, how do you find people to work hourly? Well, because their hourly pay is based off of a 40-hour week. You know, it's going to be hard to convince people to work for hourly pay if you're only able to get one job a week for 24 hours. So your job as a business owner who is actively keeping employees busy is to make sure that that schedule is back to back full. So I mastered keeping one crew busy uh, the first year and a half of my business. So for me to extend to two crews, it wasn't a matter of taking on more work. It was being able to guarantee that I can keep another crew busy for 40 hours. So that is the trick. So there have been times where I have not had work for the upcoming week Um, on a Sunday. It'd be Sunday morning and there'd be nothing for the next week. And it wasn't because I wasn't working. It wasn't because of uh, things that I could control. It was things that were outside of my control. I really thought um, I had done everything right. But my ability to be resourceful was the difference maker in those tough times. You know, there would be times where I'd say, hey, there's no work Monday, but we have work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Did we have the work? No, we didn't. But I made sure I told my team that because I didn't want them to panic. But rest assured, on Monday, I'd worked harder than I had ever worked to make sure that that happened. And there was a belief that occurred in me that told me, you're going to find work. Don't worry about it. Just do your process. Do what you do. Okay, because in this business is a numbers game. When you serve homeowners, there's so many of them that I mean, you just have to put yourself in the position to be uh, to to sell them. And I outlined my entire CRM, my entire uh, sales, you know, department of my business based off of categorizing people based on where they are in the buying process. Those of you who have bought into uh, the automations that we offer, you know that I set you up with deal stages. And part of the reason why we have these is not only to make sure that the right communication is going out 
at the right stage that the person's in, but it's also a crazy good sales tool for you. Because for me, if I'm ever in a position where I need to find work, which I do repetitively, okay, I don't wait now. From previous experience, I would wait until work slowed down before I press my foot on the gas and I would go from zero to 90 miles an hour. But I learned that it's better to go to, to hit 60 miles an hour every single day where I don't have to go 90 miles an hour. I could just do 60 miles an hour and I will always have work. That requires having a daily discipline to follow up, to make phone calls, to work deals, okay, every single day. Okay. So for me, I learned that. So right now where I'm at in my business and as I pull up my calendar here, I am booked out until um, the 1st of November and it's the 5th of October. Okay. So I have all these jobs in, in booked out slots which are great, but that, but right now is where I'm going to put my phone on the gas at 60 miles an hour. I don't care that I'm booked up a month. I think that you, you should book up two months. I think any longer than two months means that it's time for you to get another crew. Now, those of you know that I work with teams of four. Um, so, you know, I mean, I only need four to five jobs a week um, to keep these guys busy. So, with all that being said, I learned, you know, 60 miles an hour is the foot that needs to be put on the gas. That's how fast we need to go in terms of sales. And my daily routine is this. First thing I'm doing is I'm looking at my notification ticker to see who's been opening up my proposals over the weekend. If it's Monday, okay, I'm going to give you guys my Monday routine. Who's opening my proposals? Who's interested? I am constantly looking at this. I look at this more than I look at Facebook and Instagram. Why? Because I want to be successful. This stuff is more important to me than, you know, the birthday party that someone threw that I haven't seen in five years. So I look at this stuff strategically. Then I'm going into my CRM and I'm looking and seeing who is a new lead that came into my system, whether it's through a website, whether it's through HomeAdvisor, and I'm looking to see their activity. Are they opening up my emails? Are they looking at links? Okay, so I'm setting up my Monday to see who I need to contact to schedule an estimate because, guys, you and I both know this. You need to schedule an estimate before you schedule a deal. Okay, so we have to get that estimate scheduled. That's number one. Okay, so in terms of the deal stages that I was speaking about, you have a list of people that need estimates. Okay. That's so valuable because this is your pool of potential. Okay. So if you're in a position where you only have two to three jobs scheduled, you need to be hammering out phone calls to these people in this list. These are people that come in through lead services. These are people that come through Facebook. These are people that come through the phone. These are people that come through the website. Uh, well, not not so much the phone because if you talk to them on the phone, chances are they've scheduled an estimate. But you get my drift. And the goal is, is for you to get these people to convert to estimates. That's the first level of conversion to an estimate, okay? That is a sale in itself. And when you start seeing it like that, you start approaching cold calling with a little more enthusiasm because I see an estimate as I sold somebody who at one point uh, was not an estimate to an estimate. Okay, that's the first sale that you're making is getting people to agree to an estimate. So from there, um, you know, you have to understand how to cold call. You can't just, you know, get intimidated. And I come with a lot of cold calling experience. Um, those of you who know, I was in the car business. And if you don't have any deals on the board, you better get your butt on the phone. So what I would do is I would go to my manager, I'd get a stack of papers, like 50 or 60 papers, of customer information that have went through the uh, the service department. And in that service department, it would tell me the year, make, and model of their car, how many miles it had, um, and then it would tell me their name, address, phone number. Okay. So I'd have this, this in my, in my hands and then the system, you know, they had this system pretty much set up of what upgrade would be for them and what the payment would be. So I would call people left and right. I would sit in that office. I just remember sitting in that office. I locked the door. Okay. It was a glassed in office. And as everyone was kind of mingling and talking outside and wasting time, I was hammering out phone calls and little did I know at the time, um, that I was actually training myself to handle rejection. And when you understand that concept of handling rejection, uh, you get numb to it because that's the scary thing with cold calling is that, you know, you you feel like you're bothering people. Um, you, you get all sorts of responses. 
think about how you answer a cold call, okay? Chances are you're like me. You get upset and angry that they found your phone number and you hang up, especially if it's something that you didn't request. So you have to be strategic when you make these calls. And I always think like, dude, if these guys just took a different approach, they're so freaking cold calls don't have to be cold. Okay. And that's the, that's the thing. Like when people call me, they're like, hi, um, can I speak to the business owner? I immediately hung up. How many of you guys have done that? Right. And then the other one is, hi, may I speak to Tanner? Mal-? And they're like reading off the screen. I'm like, no, you can't goodbye. But when I made phone calls, I knew their name. That's number one. When you get ready to make a call to either schedule an estimate or maybe even to sell a job, you need to know their name. And you're like, of course I know their name. No, no, no. When you get on that phone and they answer, you're going to forget it. So you have to recite it in your head. So what I would do is I would take their first name and I immediately took the chance of the risk of knowing that if I call this person, it's going to be the person of the name that I have that answers the phone. So the first thing I'm looking for is a yes. So the yes is going to be as soon as I say their name. If I get them to say yes, I can have a conversation with them, right? So instead of wasting the first initial interaction, it's like a landing page. If the headline isn't right, people are leaving. If the first interaction when you call somebody is is awkward and, and questionable, forget it. I mean, honestly, you lost them. So what I would do is I'd say if, if the person's name was Robert, um, I would make the call. I'd say, hey, Robert. And immediately the subconscious mind reacts with yes. Yeah, it's Robert. Before they, they don't even care who it is. Yeah, Robert's here. What's up? You know? <laughs> and I'd be like, Robert, great. Hey, man, real quick. It's Tanner. I don't want to waste too much of your time. So right then and there, I would... I would get rid of the pressure of how much time is this this random call going to take out of my day. I, mean, I don't waste much of your time. I'm, I I respect your time, Robert. Right then and there, I've I've gotten my yes, and I've I've pretty much outlined to him that I respect him and I respect his time because no one wants to answer a freaking cold call. All right, that's the reality of it. So I did. Hey, Robert. He said yes. Hey, man, real quick. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Okay, and before he even answers. I identify myself. I don't want to him to waste his breath identifying who he is. He shouldn't have to do that, okay? Because I'm the one making the call. So he he no, he shouldn't waste his breath asking me who I am. I'm the one making the call. So I'd be like, Robert, hey, real quick, this is Tanner with Toyota, okay? Boom, right then and there, I've built my rapport based off of the brand I work for. Look, if I if if you know, Hey, your job's to work for a good brand when you're making calls and you know, your company is a great brand. So make sure you say it with emphasis. Okay. You know, and, and I'm going to give you an example of how I do it with, uh, the painting business too, but I'd be like, Hey, it's Tanner with Toyota. Look real quick, man. I was reviewing your file. Boom. So like before Robert even has a chance to deny me. Okay. I have first, I've gotten a yes out of him already. I have identified that I respect this time. I've identified myself as somebody who works for a familiar company or a company of stature. And then I made it personal. And now it seems as though I have Robert's best interest in mind because I'm reviewing his file. So, hey, Robert. And then I'd get the yes. Hey, I I don't want to waste too much of your time. My name's Tanner. I'm with Toyota and I was reviewing your file. Just like there. Okay. Okay. And right then you might get a, uh, my file or what is this about? Or, Hey, Hey, I understand real quick. I was just looking at the, uh, the 2014 Toyota that you have that you recently brought into the service department. Okay. So more credibility is being built that you recently brought into the service department. And I was looking at the payment that you're making on that thing. And I was just curious, we have what's called an amnesty program right now. And that amnesty program is actually a program that allows you to upgrade your vehicle to the new model year and keep your payments the same. And then I just be quiet and he'd be like, well, well, and then that's then, then in there you, you, you would, you would take whatever they say and you'd handle that objection and then you try to sell it. So he'd be like, oh, well, well, I'm happy with my car right now. Well, may I ask you, Robert, what features uh, are you looking for in, in, in a new car that your car currently doesn't have? And then he'd be like, you know, I'll be honest with you, man. I, my wife really likes XM radio. <laughs> Robert, the new model has it. Keep the payments the same. Look, I'm here today until 7 o'clock. Can you make it in for a test drive, Robert? I have 
facilitated the entire sales process in under 60 seconds. Okay. And literally made it to where now Robert has, you know, was just chilling throughout his day. Now he's thinking about actually coming to the dealership to meet Tanner, some random guy they called him off of a piece of paper. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. This is the level of tenacity you have to have when you make phone calls. It doesn't matter if you sell cars. It does not matter if you sell insurance. It does not matter if you sell paint jobs, flooring jobs, crown molding jobs. It doesn't matter. Okay. Sales is sales. The only thing that's different is the actual medium of exchange that the person gets in return for their money. So I did this with life insurance. It would be the same thing. Hi, Miss Jones. Uh, yes, this is Tanner uh, with AmeriLife. And I was just calling you because I received a notification from you uh, regarding uh, you wanting some information on Medicare and the changes. Just so you know, I'm going to be in your area next week. Um, I wanted to know if Tuesday would work at about one o'clock for our appointment. And then I'd be quiet. Uh, uh, let me look at my calendar. What? Crazy. Okay. Direct the sale. Um, let's talk about, um, you know, how I do it in the painting business. Okay. So there's a couple different things that I do. And look, you might be a little intimidated. You might be like, Dan, like, I don't know if I'll be that sharp on the phone. It's called practice. Don't be scared. Just learn, go through it. You know, take what I'm telling you, replay this podcast. You know, I'm, I'm trust me, this stuff works. And you know, the biggest mistake people make is that they, they treat, getting estimates, like getting people to agree to estimates, especially with new leads, they treat that like, you know, um, it's like a given and it's not because if I look at my new lead deal stage here, a lot of you can agree who have the automations. I have over 70 people who have requested estimates, whether it's through the website, whether it's, um, through home advisor, whether it's the thumbtack, whether it's Angie's list that made its way into my system that I can't convert to get me to give an estimate. Either they don't answer the phone or they don't reach out. So I have to actually sell them on the estimate. Okay. There's people who you've called who uh, put in a request and then they change their mind because they, they have all these beliefs in their mind about, Oh my gosh, what did I do? I submitted a request. Now I got to meet people. Oh my God, the coronavirus. Oh my God, all these things that happen. Right? So here's how I approach it with a painting estimate. And it's the same thing. You're going to notice the same pattern. Uh, hey, Mark, this is, uh, you know, hey, Mark, get my yes. Hey, hey, I don't want to waste too much of your time. This is Tanner with Premium Painting. I just received your request on Home Advisor, and I was looking at our schedule, and I wanted to know if next Tuesday at 1 o'clock would work for uh, the painting estimate that you requested. Uh, hold, hold on. Let me, let me look at my schedule. Okay, that's the response you're going to get. Um, and then, you know, there's also people that you'll get whenever you're doing these calls to say, uh, you know, hey, hey, Janice. Uh, yes, this is, hey, I don't want to waste too much time. This is Tanner uh, with Premium Painting. We just received your request on Home Advisor, um, and I wanted to reach out to you to see if next Tuesday would work for your painting estimate. Oh, oh, well, we didn't mean to do that, Tanner. We're, we're you know, we're just going to hold off right now. Oh, no, no, no problem. Um, I just want to let you know that the estimates are free, and really, uh, we just provide estimates to help you budget for the project. And again, there's no, uh, there's no uh, commitment necessary. Uh, what we'll do is, and I'll, I'll briefly explain how it works. So I don't even give her a chance to give me another objection. I know that, you know, there's things that she's thinking about that are stopping her from wanting to get that estimate. Maybe she's thinking about the time constraint. Maybe she's thinking about that. She's going to have to commit to giving me money. Maybe she's thinking about having to commit to set a time for the job. Like I know that once we get in front of her, Okay, the game's going to change. You got to get in front of this person. So for me, I'm like, yeah, just so you know, uh, it's a pretty easy process. It's only going to take about 30 minutes. And from there, we're going to, you know, obviously do an outline of the project. And then we will email you a proposal. So there's no need to commit on the spot. And this way you have a budget. So uh, when you are ready for the project, you, you know exactly what to expect. How does that sound? Again, I just want to let you know, I mean, I do have Tuesday. Does another day work for you? Do you like mornings or afternoons? Which one do you like, Janice? And then from there, you know, it's it's hard for people to say no to that. And look, I'm all about having the best interest in mind for people. Don't be, uh, you know, a sleazy salesperson. But you know, like this is the lifeboat mentality. I teach this too. The lifeboat mentality is that you have all these people in the marketplace drowning. And you're a lifeboat because you're a good person. You have integrity. You have 
all the intangibles of somebody who operates in a uh, in a way that exudes a excellent character. Okay, and you have to realize that it's either you're the one that's going to help them with the paint job or whatever service that you offer, or somebody else is. And the thing about it is, if you have their best interest in mind, there's a good chance that somebody else does not. So the idea is to get people to get in your lifeboat. And sometimes you have to do whatever you have to do to do it. It's advice that I got from somebody in car sales. You know, I'd say, look, man, how are you okay with this? You and I both know that you're selling this car for 3000 more than what you should be selling it for. And he's like, look, you know, at the end of the day, somebody is going to sell this person a car probably for more than what we're selling it to her for. I would rather it be me who sells her the car because I at least know if she calls me, I'll be there for her if there's a problem and I'll make sure that whatever the problem is gets taken care of. And from there, my eyes open. I'm like, all right, I get it. I'm, I'm in, you know, but uh, the good news is we're not selling cars. We're selling a service that people need more than they want. And when you have that mentality, you're even more confident on the phone because it's like, you're not even selling somebody a car. Nobody, you know, that guy didn't need a car who uh, upgraded to the new model. Okay. That person didn't need the life insurance I was selling. Okay. But this is what I had to do to survive. This was my, my job. But when I transitioned to the trades, it's like, you know, look, your house really needs to be painted. And I'm the guy who's going to make sure that you have a phenomenal experience. So the confidence is even greater. So that's what I got for you guys. Be resourceful. If there's ever a time where you're running low on work, you need to get into that sales tool belt. You have to make sure that you have this cold calling ability. Okay. Maybe in the next episode, we'll talk about um, after the estimate and how we call people who we've given estimates to what that conversation sounds like someone that already knows you already knows the price okay and you have to overcome the objections on the phone so that's what i got for you thank you so much for listening to this guys we got drip jobs coming out soon i really hope that you give it an opportunity when i launch it probably going to announce it on the podcast first so stay tuned appreciate you guys if you haven't done so already please leave me a review on apple um you know a nice five star with a little comment um, those go a long way. So I really appreciate the uh, the support on the podcast and uh, all around. So I hope you got something out of this. If you want to elaborate on it, please reach out to me. If you want a free coaching session, uh, what I'd like to do is just record it for the podcast. So if you're okay with that, send me an email, tanner at tradethrive.com. Hey, I just want to take a second to thank you for joining me here on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to let you know that my passion is coaching people, helping people. Um, I've changed my Instagram name to at contractor coach. And I did that because that is my passion. I want to help you. So please reach out to me. If you have an issue going on in your business, send me an email, find me on Instagram, message me, and let's do a breakthrough session. I want to work through your problems in your business to help you get to that next level. And, And one thing that I always say is this, you know, the difference between those that get over the humps and the hurdles in business It's just a change in perspective, and that's what I plan to offer you. So get with me, message me, allow me to help you take your business to the next level.